I'm going to show you the right way to use a scope service inside of a singleton service. This can be a cause of many headaches if you don't know how scope and singleton work inside of ASP.NET Core, but that's what we're going to clarify in this video. Here's what we're going to do. I have a scoped weather service, which is just the simple weather forecast generator that you get when you scaffold a .NET project. It only has one method and it's going to return an array of weather forecast objects. Now I want to use this service inside of my background job to report which date has the hottest temperature. If we take a look at our background job, you will notice that it's implementing the background service class. This is a base class to implement long running background jobs and under the hood it's using the hosted service abstraction that's available in .NET Core. The implementation as it stands right now is using a 5 second time span to create a periodic timer and then I'm going to execute my while loop whenever the periodic timer ticks and this is going to be every 5 seconds. Now let's say I want to report on the hottest day inside of my periodic background task. So what if I just tried to inject the weather service as any other dependency. So here is the weather service and inside of the body of my while loop let's fetch the forecast. So I'm going to say weather service get forecast. This is going to give me back an array of weather forecast objects and then I can say forecast max by and I'm going to select the object that has the highest temperature in Celsius. This object could be null so I'm going to take care of that and let's say I want to write an information log saying that for a given date the temperature is some value. I'm going to provide these values from my hottest day object. So let's store this into a variable. Let's call it the hottest day and I'm going to use it to provide the date for when the hottest day occurs. So let's access the hottest day object and use the date on this object. And because it's nullable, I'm going to use the safe access operator and let's do the same for our temperature in Celsius. So now we have a simple background job. Now what's going to happen if I just go ahead and start my application? You're going to see that I will run into an exception. And if we take a look at the console window, we can begin to understand what caused the problem. Now we're getting an error that some services are not able to be constructed. And this is because the periodic background task cannot consume a scoped service from a singleton. Now why is this the case? If I look at the source code of the add hosted service method, you're going to see that it's creating a service descriptor of a singleton for the hosted service that I'm registering, which means that our periodic background task is registered as a singleton and you can't inject a scoped service into a singleton service. I'm going to show you how to fix this. It's actually a very simple fix, but I want to briefly comment on the service lifetimes that we have in ASP.NET Core. We have transient, scoped and singleton services. Transient services are resolved from the dependency injection container always as a new instance. Singleton services always have just one instance during the lifetime of our application, which is obviously why it's called a singleton, but scoped services are somewhere in between. When you resolve a scoped service, you are getting that service from a service scope. You can think of this as a short-lived bucket that's going to contain your service instances, and you can resolve your scoped services from this scope. A very typical example of a service scope is your HTTP request inside of the web API, which is why you are able to use scope services inside of your HTTP requests. Now, how are we going to fix this? Well, you need to inject the I service scope factory instance, and we're going to use this to create a custom service scope. Let's, for example, create a new service scope, which is the iService scope interface. And you can do this by calling the create scope method on the service scope factory. Now that I have my service scope, I can use it to resolve any scope service. And one of those services is the weather service. The scope gives me access to the service provider. And then I can say get required service and resolve my weather service instance. So you can see that my code is compiling now. Let's go ahead and start the application. And you can see that our background job is running and every five seconds is going to tell us what is the hottest day and what is the temperature in Celsius on that particular day. Now we can go ahead and stop this. And I want to comment on the different ways that you can create 
a service scope. In this example, I showed you how to use a service scope factory, but what if you wanted to use the iService provider directly? So let's rename this to service provider. And you often see this approach, so you might be wondering which one is correct. Well, let's take a look at the source code of the create scope method on the service provider interface. And you will see that it's just resolving the service scope factory from dependency injection and then calling the create scope method on this service. So this is just another way for you to use the service scope factory. And this is why we can argue that you should actually be using the I service scope factory to create your custom service scopes. It's also important to define the service scope with a using statement so that it gets correctly disposed. And this will also make sure that your scope services are disposed together with the service scope. So this is the general pattern that you will see when you need to resolve scope services outside of an HTTP request. In this example, we are resolving a scope service inside of a background task. Now, I want to show you a more interesting use case that is not as straightforward as this example, and we're going to be working with our database context, which is configured as a scope service by default. Now, I'm using an in-memory database to make running the application simpler, but our database context defines just one entity, which is an API request, and the API request has the primary key of a trace identifier. What I'm going to do is to create a middleware that's going to log all of my incoming API requests and store the trace identifier values. So this is just a trivial example, but I want to show you a very powerful concept when it comes to ASP.NET Core middleware and injecting scoped services. I'm going to inject my request delegate that's going to allow me to define my middleware and I'm going to create one async method that's going to be called invoke async. This is the convention how you define your middleware and you need to define one argument which is going to be the HTTP context instance. Now to actually execute the middleware you're just going to call the request delegate and pass it the HTTP context. Now additionally what I want to do is to obtain an instance of my database context and add my API request. I'm going to start with the iService scope factory approach. So let's inject that as a dependency and let's create our custom service scope. So I'm going to say service scope factory, create scope. Then we're going to obtain a database context instance by saying scope service provider get required service and I want to resolve my app database context. Now that I have my database context instance I can add a new API request and I'm going to use the HTTP context to get the trace identifier value. Finally I'm going to say database context save changes async and this is going to persist this in the database which in this case is going to be an in-memory database. Now let's go ahead and create an API endpoint that's going to access the database context and try to get the local instance of an API request with this primary key. Let me show you what I mean by this. So let's create a get endpoint and let's call it current request. I'm going to need two dependencies. One is going to be the HTTP context. So I'm just going to inject it. And the other is going to be my app database context. Inside of my endpoint, here's what I'm going to do. I want to fetch an entity entry by using my app db context and I'm going to access my API requests database set and I can use the local property to see what are the instances that are currently inside of the change tracker because my middleware is going to add this to the database context before my request is executed I expect to see the API request instance inside of the change tracker. So let's see if this is the case. So if I say API requests local, I can go ahead and call the find entry method and use the HTTP context to pass the trace identifier. This is our primary key. And then I'm going to try to return the entity instance on my entity entry. This is going to be my local API request that is currently inside of the change tracker. I also need to remember to add my middleware. So I'm going to say app use middleware and specify the request logging middleware. So let's go ahead and start the application and call this API endpoint. Let's call this endpoint from the Swagger user interface. And we're going to hit the breakpoint inside of the middleware first, which is what we expected. And here I'm going to create a service scope and then get my database context instance. You can see the HTTP context contains a trace identifier value. 
and I'm going to add this to the database context and then call save changes. And now I'm going to call my API endpoint, which is the current request endpoint. And if I try to fetch the API request using this same trace identifier value, because I'm still inside of the same HTTP request, you will see that the entity entry is null. And this is strange, right? Let me explain why this is going on. Inside of our middleware, we are creating a custom service scope which is different from the service scope that is already created for this API request. So how can we fix this to use the same scope as our minimal API endpoint? Well, you could try injecting the database context as just another service. So let's say I add DB context as a dependency, but when you start your application, you're going to find out that you can't do this because you're going to get an exception that you are injecting a scoped service into a singleton. And this is because all middleware is created once for the application's lifetime, which means that middleware in ASP.NET Core is a singleton service and you can't inject a scoped service into a singleton. So if we can't use a custom service scope and we can't inject the database context as a dependency, how can we even fix this? Well, you might have not known this, but middleware supports method injection. So I can add the database context as another argument in the invoke async method. And this is going to be resolved from dependency injection, which is going to use the same scope as my HTTP request. So now I can get rid of the custom service scope code, and I'm going to use the database context that's part of the invoke async method. So let's go ahead and start the application and see how this changes the overall behavior. I'm going to call our API again, and again we hit the breakpoint inside of the middleware. Now notice that the database context is not null, so we are getting our scoped instance that's resolved from the same scope as the overall HTTP request. So we're going to add our API request and save it in the database, and then I'm going to invoke my minimal API endpoint. And you can see that when I try to fetch this entity entry with the trace identifier as the primary key, we get back an entity entry object. And you can see the current state is unchanged and it has the primary key value set. So I can return this and we're going to get the result back in the Swagger user interface with the trace identifier for this API request. So you can inject scope services into your middleware using method injection and for your background jobs or services that are being called outside of an HTTP request, you have to create a custom service scope and then use this scope to resolve your scoped service. If you enjoyed this video, then you should watch this one next. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.